What's up guys, it's your main man Evan Danger. I'm from New York City in the United States of America. I'm a bilingual stand-up comedian living right here in beautiful Taipei. How long have you been in Taiwan? I've been here for about a year and a half. Uh, prior to this, I was living in Shanghai, China. Uh, shout out to all my Zhongguo Pengyou men out there. Um, so yeah, I was in China uh, for a little over 10 years, um, absolutely incredible country, incredible people. Uh, but you know, I've had more than enough communism for one lifetime. So uh, I left and I had uh, quite a few friends actually point me in the direction of Taiwan. They said, you know, it's basically China plus freedom and democracy. And I said, all right, let me check this out. Came here for the first time in November, 2022. I was here for like two weeks and I said, yeah, this is my new home. Let's move here. So yeah, good decision. It's pretty awesome here. You left China and came here. Have you had any surprises? Not really. It was a very easy transition because culturally it's it's so similar. Um, you know, I'm still working on reading traditional characters. I'm a bit slow with that. But no, I think, you know, Shanghai and Taipei, you know, maybe different uh, in terms of how fast paced things are and in terms of the pressure, I feel like <laughs> compared to uh, Shanghai and New York City where I grew up. Taipei is almost like a beach town. It's very relaxed, it's very chill. But no, it, it was pretty easy coming from, from Shanghai to here. Okay, and could you give us some of the good differences between Shanghai and Taiwan, as in Taipei? Freedom, democracy, freedom of speech. I can say whatever I want about the government here. I can do whatever I want. Say, well, you know, can't, uh, can't do whatever I want, but yeah, freedom, freedom. That's, that's the biggest difference. What are some of the difficulties that you've um, encountered that you haven't encountered yet? The population of Shanghai is greater than the population of all of Taiwan. So you've got almost 30 million people in Shanghai crammed into one city. So it can be very stressful. In general, I'll, I'll never say a bad thing about China. I absolutely love the place. Um, you know, nothing, nothing but love for the people and the, the country, not the, not the government. They can... A comedian. <laughs> yeah. How the reception in China compared to Taiwan? Oh, I'd say uh, very, very similar. You know, Stand-up stand comedy is, is universal, whatever language you're doing it in. Um, so I, I actually perform in both English and Chinese here. I started in Shanghai in around 2015, 2016 or so. That was when it was really in its infancy in China. Um, so I really got to ride that wave with some of the biggest uh, Chinese comedians like uh, Cheng Lu, uh, Shi Yan, Storm Shu, Nora Yang, uh, Churza did shows with pretty much all these guys. Um, got to see, uh, basically got to see the entire country of China for free by just doing comedy shows, you know. But yeah, in recent years, the, you know, as, as with everything in uh, China, like the government really wants to control absolutely every single aspect of your life. Uh, censorship for stand-up comedy, for social media, for, for not YouTube, but the Chinese equivalents of YouTube just became so uh, ludicrous, like absolutely ridiculous. They would censor everything you would do, the, the list of topics you can't mention just kept on getting longer and longer. And so the point where it's really stifling your creativity, um, and not just that, but like, you know, I had a couple of friends that got arrested, they got fined huge amounts of money um, that went to, you know, I went to jail for, for jokes that they wrote. Um, I said, you know, I'm done with this. I'm not, I'm not going to jail for, uh, for telling some dumb joke. Um, but the comedy scene here is great. You know, obviously we have uh, freedom of speech, which is, you know, <laughs> invaluable in stand-up comedy. Um, so right now, uh, Taipei is actually, Taiwan, I should say, is becoming a uh, major destination for international stand-up comedians. Uh, the past year and a half or so, we've had uh, Russell Peters, Sheng Wang, Atsuko Yatsukutsa, uh, Jinx Yeo, Vicky Wong, all these megastars coming through. Um, and that's just for the English scene. Um, and now we're really seeing uh, stand-up comedy blow up all around the country. So yeah, it's awesome. It's, it's really blowing up. We have a lot of super talented uh, guys and girls here. And you know, we're really just all working together to continue growing the industry. Because you know, it's, there's 25 million people here and we only have about 10 or 12 comedy clubs in the entire country. So a lot of work to do still. Um, but you know, of course we've got our, our homegrown heroes. We've got Brian, Halong, uh, Janice, Ray Ray. They've been doing you know, international tours, selling out stadiums now. So yeah, it's, it's a great time to be here. Uh, it's a great time uh, to be part of stand-up comedy in Taiwan. And um, you know, if you're, I, wherever you are, you can 
you can come out and see a show now. What advice would you give to anyone who wishes to come here? It's a great place to live, great food, great culture, great people. Keep your salary expectations very low. What part of Taiwanese culture do you find most fascinating? One thing that I, I think is really cool uh, that they did not have in China is like these parades of the the guys in the the big like demon costumes or god costumes. I, I need to learn about what that is because it's so fascinating. So I always see that, uh, especially in this neighborhood, these guys walking around in like these ten foot tall costumes. Do you know what those are? Yeah. You've got like. A, <laughs> Couple, couple hundred guys almost, um, you know, following these, these guys dressed up as these huge. They, they, they got to be something demonic because they, they, they look so evil. Um, and then one of my local friends, she mentioned she doesn't really know a whole lot about it either, but she said, yeah, this has to do with, like, the underworld and, and all that. So, like, that is this incredibly badass, incredibly metal. One other thing I really love is Taiwanese baseball. Have you been to a, a baseball game in Taiwan? No. Oh, dude, you got to go. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's so much fun. So uh, I'm from New York City. I grew up watching Yankee games, um, you know, which is always which is always great. But like American baseball compared to Taiwanese baseball is very boring. Is very slow. American baseball stadiums are notorious for having very overpriced, warm, nasty beer. You know, you wait in line for 10 minutes. You get a beer that's this big. It tastes like dog piss. It's awful. But here, they actually have family marts inside the stadium. So you're at a baseball game, you walk two minutes, you can get the Asahi tall cans. They're ice cold, it's delicious. So I went with my parents last year, we're just crushing beers, you know, watching the, the cheerleaders, watching the baseball game. The baseball game's here, it's like a giant party. There's, they're blasting techno music the entire time. You got cheerleaders, you got creepy guys watching the cheerleaders, you got hardcore fans, it's, like, it's ridiculous. It's, it's crazy, yeah. If you had to change anything in Taiwan, what would it be? You know, this might be a unpopular opinion, but um, I really think that the immigration laws against uh, Chinese people here are uh, ridiculous, discriminatory, and uh, mutually detrimental. Um, I think like people in Taiwan have this idea that every single person in China is like this brainwashed communist psycho, and that that couldn't be further from the truth. Um, you know, a lot of people in China, they the vast majority of people there, they just want to live a happy, prosperous life. They're not obsessed with invading Taiwan and taking away your freedoms. They're tired of Xi Jinping and his bullshit too. They don't want to deal with any of that. Um, but you know, and a lot of them want to escape communism just like, just like me, man. But I think if, if Taiwan has a uh, declining population, if they have a labor shortage, whereas uh, China has a, a job market, which is, you know, really in the dumps, um, you know, it would be mutually beneficial to let some of uh, the young Chinese people, you know, probably with maybe more of a Western education, come out here and contribute and live a, a free life. Um, yeah, that's just that's just my sense. Also, I would like to see some of my some of my friends from China again, and it's impossible for them to get a visa, and I can't get a visa back to China. So, yeah. If you are to do it all over again, what would you have done differently? Oh. <laughs> I think if I could redo, if I could undo one thing, I would not have spent uh, all those nights at Maji Square uh, partying until 8 in the morning. If, I, if there's one thing I dislike about Taiwan, it's uh, Maji Square. Too, too many drunk idiots, and myself included. Yeah, that's my, my one regret, <laughs> spending all that money and uh, all those brain cells uh, partying at Maji. But I don't do that anymore, so... Do you have anything else to tell Taiwanese people? Come check out our shows, subscribe to this guy, subscribe to this guy, and uh, yeah. His Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube links will be in the description below. You can go check me out. Thank you very much for giving us your time. And My pleasure. Hope you continue to enjoy your stay in Taiwan. I will, I will. Yeah, and I'll catch y'all at, at a baseball game or something. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, dude. Cool. All right.